welcome to another video from Rail150. Um, what I'm going to do today is just um, show, I wouldn't say an update of the layout because I've actually uh, decided to go back and uh, change a few things. Uh, last time <clears throat> when I showed this layout there was a, uh, here, there, there was a Pico crossing, a long Pico crossing and what this allowed me to do was to allow this track to go on this uh, line here and go into the station which is under development and then this line here would cross over to this and I think I was just doing that to be honest to use up the Pico crossing uh, there was no real sensible reason why to do it but what it did mean is that I couldn't have two separate circuits on the track so this is the um, outside and inside circuit and obviously they would swap over and this would become the outside and then return back to the inside and with some you know with playing around with things you know what often happens is that you make changes to your to your original ideas and that's what just what I've done here w one thing I did realize is that well I need to be able to get back out onto the other line again so I put in this particular crossing here but this doesn't allow me to go from this line to that line but it does allow me to swap back again if I want to go back on to the outside line. So with playing around and I thought, well, actually this is a quite a boring experience. So all I can do is just get the trains to go around. Um, can't run two at once because there's a risk of them crashing. And I really want to go with, have them going in uh, opposite directions. So that was also difficult um, given the way that I wired it up. So I'm making some changes. So what I've done is to take this, <clears throat> take this area out. I'm going to now join this one over to over to this uh, piece of track here, and have two separate layouts. I do still have a Pico crossing with my pink nail varnish on, which shows how uh, it shows the areas which were shorting out, and what I had to do to prevent that. That will remain because I think that's quite good because I have points before which allows me to either go here or turn into this into the station and that's fine and um, this particular track here goes into the station anyway uh, this station is going to be bigger it's not full size yet and I, obviously as you can see I haven't joined it up there's a little bit of development work to be done you know, it's a big job uh, to be honest making these stations uh, this is these these pillars here take a lot of making um, and I'm trying to come up with some quicker way of doing it. If I had a laser cutter I'd be over the moon and I'd be able to just make them. But anyway this station is going to be out to here. It's going to incorporate six separate arches um, and that'll allow hopefully and what I'm looking for is when you approach the station it looks you know it looks pretty impressive with having that double arch pretty much like a lot of small mainline stations. This particularly is not a focus on Darlington Bank Top but Bank Top Station has just two arches. Uh, that was my the mainline station I remember when I was growing up. Um, and that suits me, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And Bank Top also has um, an external express line going on the outside of it. And again, that kind of suits the idea. And I always thought this tower from scale scenes looked a bit similar to Bank Top. It's not ideal. It's not well, it's not ideal if you're gonna model Bank Top, but this this railway is you know, this model railway is more to, meant to be more fun than trying to recreate an absolute uh, replica of our, um, you know, an historical interpretation of what actually takes place. So it has elements in it of what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, you have an opportunity here to see some of the rolling stuff that I've got. Um, it's all been in storage for a number of years now while I've been moving into, into Germany. These are some reach, recent purchases, uh, which I'm going to do uh, take a closer look at soon. Uh, these have come from uh, Backman's, they're brand new Pullman carriages. Um, um, I had some of the old Pullman carriages, which are here. Hornby Triang coming from my Silver Jubilee pack from 1977. And I was just keen to see, you know, what the difference was and how things had moved on. And yeah, they have, things have moved on. And I've got to say, things have moved on. But... You know, I'm still, I still, I'm still a little bit nostalgic about them and the stuff I've got. Here is a little bit of a tip to a Darlington-built locomotive. Uh, this is Tornado Six O One Six Three. Uh, this is this was the first locomotive I bought um, to go with 
running this layout in the new era, as it were. So I bought this in 2013. I was it 2014? I bought it quite recently. But, you know, I had to make Tornado my first, per first new purchase in uh, 35 years just because of its significance to my, you know, to my, my own personal um, knowledge of the area and where I come from. Okay, here is a hill. We've seen this before. It's not complete yet. I've had to take a little bit of a delay with doing the layout with work and various other things, but yeah, I'm trying to get back into it now. So this hill is just going to be an area to have a little bit of a scenery, but I've also, what I've done is created a complete circuit around the hill, and this is what I intended to do, so I've got children who want to be able to play, and you know, I, I can, if they want to have the Thomas things running, if I've got some expensive rolling stock, so you know how expensive rolling stock is these days, I've got a uh, uh, these carriages alone are, I got these on an offer from Hattons for £33 each. You attach six of those to Tornado and suddenly you've got sort of around about uh, £280 of rolling stock and I've got a four-year-old child who wants to run his Thomas stuff. He, I can quickly, if, he's gonna, if there's a danger of him hitting anything I've got or coming into contact with it, I can send him onto this inner loop and just have him going around there for a bit until everything's back under control and manageable. Okay, so what have I got? Um, well, this is, this is where I am at the moment. These little bits of wood at the edge will be blended in. I'll work those in with some uh, fancy woodwork, or some cunning woodwork, I suppose. At the end, there's a table which is missing at the moment. I've taken it down. This, this point is going to go into that, and that'll be the fiddle yard or storage yard or whatever. I don't really like the term fiddle yard. It sounds a bit odd. Uh, but that'll go into the storage yard. Down here, we've got the, the main line and to facilitate two tracks, being able to run quite fast. Here is a possibility of going into the station and also going onto the Thomas Loop. Thomas's Loop, I think we should call it that. It's quite good. So, three lines coming down, the two lines here. What I've got here is a bit of a station, I don't know, the term is station throat. This will be, it's a three-way point, and what this allows me to do is to come into the station if I'm coming uh, from this direction, but it also allows me to, here, I'm going to bring some track coming around into the centre. Yeah, this station won't stay. Uh, this is a, this is a um, me and my daughter built this. It's a, it's a station from Wordsworth Model Railway. Uh, that is from, um, oh, the name escapes me, it's a guy from the northeast who does models. It's not scale scenes, obviously. It'll come back to me. I'll, I'll, um, it, it'll come back to me. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is, uh, in this space, between here and here, where all this uh, abandoned railway uh, is, probably lots of money's worth of railway just stuck there at the moment, this will be a area that's going to represent a part of what Rail 150 is all about, the Shildon Cavalcade of 1975. So where all these trains have been abandoned will be an area that looks a bit like the crossings of the Mason's Arms in Shildon. I'm, building, I'm slowly building up the pub, actually, scratch building it to look like the Mason's Arms, which is, was originally the, the, it's the world's oldest station, but the building which exists now was built at the uh, turn, well, I think it was built at the end of the 19th century. Not the original station from 1825, but it's in exactly the same place. And the Mason's Arms will be somewhere down here with um, what will be a pretend entrance to uh, what was then Shildon, Shildon Wagon Works, B-R-E-L, the biggest wagon works in Europe, where the Rail 150 began. Uh, I was there as, when I was five years old in 1975, and many of the locomotives that I'm kind of collecting were there at the time. Clearly the Thomas wasn't there, but Thomas was represented by another A4, Sir Nigel Gresley, who was in his old NIM, um, <clears throat> LNER colours. There were plenty of um, Class 08s down there, but they were in British Rail Blue. There was a uh, Class 03, which needs to be purchased, but we've got the 125. The Intercity 125 was there. Um, and also our friend, the Flying Scotsman. And there was a uh, Great Western Fleet. But what that allows me to do is to run a nice blend of stock, rolling stock, from you know from the historical collection in the NRM in York, and also 
anything else I fancy running, and that, that's what makes that's what kind of makes it fun anyway. So that's the way the layout is at the moment. It's a little bit of a you know hodgepodge, and I've made some changes, but I think you know that's what happens. You try to plan things out on a computer, and then you know when you actually start playing with things or moving things around, using it, you you change your ideas, and that's that's what's happened here. Here, oddly enough, is um, I brought a few of these uh, from Hatton's. This is the uh, it's a coal truck they've just brought out. Obviously, it's a classic five-panel wagon, but it looks it's it's pointing to a colliery near where I was born called North Bitchburn. I saw that. I thought, oh well, yeah, got to get some of those. So I can put a rake of North Bitchburn colliery trucks, uh, not 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 running in 1975, but you know. I just wanted them. Okay, so that's the situation at the moment. I'm making changes. The biggest change I think is going to take place in this area here. Um, I want to sort of make a little bit more activity going on. I've stripped some track down at the end. That was some points which really mirrored what was going on there. And I thought, well, what's the point of mirroring what's going on there here? You know, it's, it's like 25, 30 pounds worth of points doing the same as what that's doing over there. Uh, the only difference is that this allows me to come from here and, and, and join any activity there. But what I think I'm going to do, and this is what I'm planning or, or thinking about, I'm going to put a point on this guy here, turning to the left, elevating the track up along the back here, Elevating, 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 and doing something with that in this small area here and having it sort of running over the top of this track, as it were. Um, because I can put some flexi track in, I can probably bring this back in anyway, but it'll run above or along the station. It might look a bit odd, but it just, you know, I've got a push for space. It just allows me to do and put another piece of elevated track in, and that'll go over to the second layer of the fiddle yard, but may, may also. Blend. I could put a raised surface on here, um, coming around, and put some kind of uh, viaduct going across to join it back again onto the raised section in front of the window. I don't know. No doubt I'll change my mind again. I'll probably th sleep on it and change my mind. But I do want a raised section. I don't know why. Another alternative is I have a raised section from here coming around and make a viaduct Sorry about, yeah, it's dipping down because of the light. Uh, make a viaduct going across there, across, um, which look, will look, which may look a bit like the Newton Cap viaduct in Bishop Auckland, I don't know. Um, a viaduct going across here and then joining on to the raised elevation. So, you know, I'll um, probably keep trying a few ideas out and we'll see what takes place. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'll pause this video now. I'm going to make some changes to the track. I'm going to put join that bit in there, so at least I'm running again, and join that section in here. Okay, and I think that's what I'm going to do. This area here, incidentally, is going to come around from the scale scenes uh, buildings there. I'm going to try to make a area where there's some activity in this area. Pretty much, what it'll be, I don't know. Um, I think I don't. I can't make this any bigger because I need to have it so at least the children can get into the room and keep using this room as well. But I'm going to have something taking place between this area here and blending into the station there, in front here, underneath the storage of uh, some of the stock I've got, is going to be the control panel. I think this is, if you look back, that's quite a nice area to stand in the middle of the layout and, and control things. So I think that's where it's going to be. At the moment, I've just shoved my controllers at the edge because that's the nearest point to the electricity. And that's what I have at the moment, but that will change. Okay, so I'll pause the video now and I'll come back when, we've, when I've uh, managed to join those bits of track up. Okay, so we're back. Uh, all the line is in place. You know, those gaps there, I've got loads of little sleepers left over, so before it gets ballasted, they'll all get filled in. But I'll, I'm going to run it for a bit first, see if it works as I expected and as I wanted. These wires will get hidden by ballast. Uh, maybe even put a, you know, some conduit or something, uh, fake conduit, 
along the side to make it a little bit more realistic. So yeah, those points are out, which are over here near the pliers. Um, they're gone. And down here, I've put some flexi track in. This will need to be replaced for a bigger piece of wood, which will start from here and go over to there, somewhere like that. You see those screws? Um, obviously they're not gonna stay. They're just there just to pin the track in place until uh, the ballast is dry, then I'll just put some ballast in those little areas there. And the gap, which we can see between here and here, I'll just fill that in with some, uh, some of the sleepers I've got left over. One of these guys in America, uh, I've, sorry, I can't remember his name. What he said is that if you hold track in place and then just flexi track this is, and move a piece of wood down it, it makes it curl, and it does. This is not a great example to be showing you because it's too short, but if you get a longer piece of flexi track and then try and bend it, it, it kind of tries to go straight again. If you pin it against, um, you know, like maybe some nails on a radius, which you've screwed into a board and push it up and then just, you flick the track over the edge of the area here, it makes it bend in. And I think what happens is that each little sleeper takes a little bit of grip and holds the piece in place rather than you holding the end of the track here and maybe down there someone trying to force it around it doesn't make these little sleepers come around uh, I'll try and find the link and put it on the video but um, I can't take credit for it it's something which I found from one of the sites in America who use Pico uh, well I use FlexiTrack whether it's Pico or not but the technique works so I've used it in a couple of places okay so Next video, no, or the next uh, part of this video will be me running, um, well, what shall I run? We've got Emily on there already. Flying Scotsman behind. Albert Hall, 1977. Uh, the other ones are DCC, that's DCC. Spencer there's DC, Thomas is DC. The class of eight is DC. Well, in fact, all of those are DC. Uh, the DC is already connected, so I think it'll be a DC locomotive. Uh, let's just see what comes on. Well, the uh, locomotive of choice was Emily. Who could resist that? Moving eyes. And there she is. Going all the way around the track, and let's catch up with her as she approaches us here. Hey, Emily. Looking good. Going a little bit faster. Well, maybe. I don't know. This is a uh, supposed to be a... Um, the, what was it called? Oh, single. Single, single, single. I forgot the name. But they could do 70 miles an hour. Sterling single. That's right. So they could actually do 70 miles an hour. So maybe she's going typical speed. You can't quite see it, but she's got moving eyes. Yeah, really nice, really nice little, you know, for Thomas range. She's one of the rare backmen. I think she's actually HO scale. Some people convert for Emily here to uh, be like a normal stunning single. I can't quite agree with that because the NRM are making one soon, which they'll be selling shortly. So I would personally wait for that to come out. Oh, lost the tent. Okay, well, Emily lost her tender, so I've replaced her on the other track, on the outside track, just to test its reliability, um, with the Albert Hall 1977. Not towing original Triang style uh, Pullman, but the new Pullman from Hattons. Uh, well, I bought it from Hattons, but obviously it's a uh, Hornby one. Uh, Lorraine with lights, not with curtains though. Um, I kind of wanted the ones with curtains. I'm not sure if the curtains of uh, material or whether they were just painted on, but I think what I'm going to do on this particular Pullman is to take the body off. Um, and I'm going to, going to get my, uh, my good wife to try and show me how to make some tiny curtains to go in there. Lights come on on this model. And it is really, really nice. I've got to say it is a really nice model. And more importantly, you see those wheels? The wheels on the old Hornby Triang ones don't go over some of the points. With, Although you can change them, which is good. I need to order some. I saw somebody selling them for £6 a set on 
on Amazon in England, so I'll get some of those sent over. Nice model, this. Um, it's, I think it should have been the dull version in the Albert Hall, but on Christmas Day 1977, the dull version didn't work. I took it back to the shop in Darlington where it was purchased, and they gave me the shiny one, and that's always been with the kit. Um, one of these days I'll buy the dull one, just to make sure I've got the, the full kit as it was. But anyway, I actually prefer the shiny one. It's pristine, and um, let's see how she runs. So this is untried, untested, out of focus. Maybe there we go. Let's see how she runs. Backwards. Okay. And here she comes, Albert Hall. Please don't crash into my bit of masking tape I've left. 1977, pulling and possibly derailing right now. Something sounds a bit odd. Yeah, the back wheel's off, so let me just turn the power off, get her back on, and so obviously a little bit of work to do on that, on that line there. But just for now, let's say disappear into the distance and hopefully no more problems. Bye bye Albert Hall. Happily going down the back straight, around the corner, over my new piece of track. Did I change those points? I can't remember. Way, she's over the points. Come on girl. Did I leave any junk? And back to the beginning. Where did she delay? Is she derailed down here? Can she do it this time? No! We, we have a problem. Let's turn that off and we will take a look. Okay, I think problem spotted. Uh, her fish plate wasn't put all the way onto a piece of track, it was uh, riding up and then throwing the back wheel off. So, second attempt. So, where were we? Yes, come on, girl. Let's see you. Round the corner. Through the unfinished station, past the blue masking tape, over the dodgy point. Yes! Looking good. What I'm going to do is leave the camera running, so why don't we watch her come round that. Uh, we'll watch her from here coming through. I had a very soft spot for this uh, model, obviously, I was a, a, little, I was a very young boy when I got this. It's nice to see her running at 39 years, nearly 40 years later. Hello! Brilliant. Brilliant. And she stops. Front wheel off. Front wheel off there. So something's going on. Anyway, that's the fun of rail uh, modelling. We've got to check out. I like problem solving. And we'll find out what that problem is there. Okay. Join me again when I've made some more progress. That shouldn't be too long. Also, I'm, uh, I've got a bit of a bug at the moment. Okay. Speak to you soon, and um, Rail150 signing out. Bye-bye.